Hello Indie Game fans, amid a slow start to the year, do go back and take a look at the best games of 2021 with all my videos where we are looking at some releases from December here. It's usually a quieter month but that does not mean a lack of good games where some unfortunate titles are underperforming in terms of sales by my estimates so let's hope I can help give them a push. Let's begin with Wolf Strike, a monochrome turn-based RPG management title where a group of protagonists enter a giant mecha tournament and want to win. The turn-based mecha combat and animations are some of the best that I have seen, but curiously enough, this game is a little bit more linear than you might think. While the trailer does show you taking on various odd jobs to get money for upgrades and repairs, you are kind of funneled into these situations where reviews have said that this is a little bit more like a visual novel in nature. However, the characters and world are a delight, making this a must-play in my opinion. I just talked about Chunzi Ruby in my video covering the year in Metroidvania's 2021, where this pixel art title from a Japanese developer is severely underrated in my opinion. If you're not familiar, this is from developer Skipmore and Esquadra Inc, published by Fly High Works, where these three names always seem to appear together with other such good games like Kamiko, Picontier, and Feiru with this retaining its signature art style and look. It's definitely a smaller title but has decent combat, good exploration and great pixel art, so if you're in the mood for one of these, do pick it up. There have been quite a number of city builder games that implemented elements from addictive games like Factorio, where one that exactly fits the bill is QB Factorium, releasing out of early access. It has you gathering resources, crafting materials, constructing buildings and researching new technology in order to gather new resources, craft new materials and so on and so forth. The conveyor belts and robot arms are fairly standard by now, with some interesting transportation options like trains and blimps, where one aspect that I quite enjoyed is being able to see the settlers go about their day. Surprisingly, the voxels in this game does not offend me and is actually quite pleasant, which is part of the chill vibes of this game. Since there are no enemies like aliens or zombies that you need to defend against, being another game to chill out to. A contender for most unique or most weird game of the year is Space Warlord Organ Trading Simulator, one where you are a black market trader on an intergalactic organ market, buying and selling all sorts of squishy bits in hopes of turning a profit. There is a trading day that you need to contend with, just like a stock market, where a bunch of fresh new organs are dropped in at the start, and it is up to you to weed out the good from the bad while fulfilling special requests, thinking about storage considerations since some alien organs may spew corrosive substances, and even trade on organ futures. It even has a meta-narrative not unlike Papers, Please with multiple endings as well, making it quite a fascinating entry. I'm sure that you have come across titles like Heavenly Bodies before, since this continues a long lineage of physics grabby games, of titles like Grow Home, Heave Ho, and liberal doses of frustration games like Getting Over It and Quop. You and maybe a buddy play as cosmonauts in the 1970s, having to move about in outer space to accomplish a variety of tasks. Of 
because with 0G, things often do go horribly or perhaps comically wrong, which is where the fun of the game lies. In the realistic setting, if you lose a grip on the structure, floating off into the endless void of space is a very real danger, although you can turn accessibility options on such that you can kick and swim in space, which can make it pretty light-hearted and fun, so definitely one that I would recommend with a friend. What a sweet little orc village. Let's make some trees nearby. A few rivers with a happy little bush over here. Perfect. And some cats. Everybody loves cats. What are you doing? My innocent cats? No! You will answer for it, dumb orcs. I cannot believe that I'm saying this in 2022, but I think that World Box God Simulator might just have revived the God game genre, which had its heyday in the 90s and early 2000s with titles like Populous, Act Razor, and Black and White, where this game brings with it all the fun and chaos of being an almighty deity, tenderly caring for your creations, or smiting them with righteous wrath. You essentially place creatures and things in a fantasy world with orcs, humans, elves, and dwarves each with their own unique traits and designs, and simply watch them go about their day, building kingdoms, conquering new lands, and even going to war, with a fully functional diplomacy system that the game will run on its own. If you do get bored of passive watching, how about summoning a tornado, dragon, UFO, or even dropping a nuke, where it's always fascinating to see what the game will do to react to your actions. It is an early access release with the goal of becoming the ultimate modern god game within the next two years and I have a very strong feeling that they will get there. Arch Vale showed up on my list of hidden gems of the year since it has done relatively well for itself even though it is a December release. This is a Zelda-style action-adventure game but has bullet hell-style combat, adding a little bit of Enter the Gungeon into the mix, but it's not a roguelite. Upgrades are solely determined through your equipment, of which there is a lot of variety, with a timeless pixel art look that I adore as well. An excellent title that I admittedly did not play enough of is Fights in Tight Spaces, a roguelite tactical deck builder that in some ways combines Into the Breach with Slay the Spire. If that sounds good to you, I would recommend that you get this immediately since I'm pretty sure that you will like it, where the various styles of martial arts provides the variety needed. It is pretty challenging in rook light fashion, so expect to die a lot, but that's part of the fun of this type of game, so enjoy the process. A hundred years have passed since the rise of the Edoran Empire and its untimely demise following the Great Plague. In these troubled times of quarreling factions and outlaws roaming the land, work is not scarce for a band of mercenaries. The stories of this age have been recorded. They are known as the War Tales. I've been a big fan of Shiro games more or less from the start, even way back before this YouTube channel was a thing, but the studio has certainly grown from small and indie to perhaps not so indie anymore, 
but their games like Evil Land and Northgard are must plays with their latest being War Tales, an open world RPG that has, interestingly, turn-based combat. It is pretty freeform in that you command a band of mercenaries seeking their fortune, adventuring and taking on contracts in the open world. I have to say, it is one of the most beautiful looking games and I cannot wait to see how this develops in early access. And of course, the king does not miss with Shovel Knight Pocket Dungeon, an action puzzle game that features many of your favourite characters from the franchise translated very cleverly into the puzzle game mechanics, with a great look as well. However, it does appear that Yacht Club Games is also not immune to December, where this looks to be underperforming relative to Treasure Trove, but it's a good game so do get it, taking the number one spot. For more of the best of 2021, watch these videos and I will see you after the jump.